Now watch this next video because <laughs> it's a guy from Romania who on the internet, you know, raised like almost $100,000 in free money for his game, you know, on the internet. You know, and, and what's neat about him, he says 95% of success is doing the research. I mean, this is a guy who doesn't even understand our culture the way someone living here is. Yeah, and maybe that's an asset because he doesn't get mixed up in the uh, stuff that we think works. You know, and that's the problem. All these experts tell us what works or whatever, and, and the only thing that really works is when you put it out there and try it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the sure success. And then see what other people have done too. Like he, so he does, so you don't fall off the cliff and do. Doing something really stupid. So he, he was selling a game. You know, he wanted to raise money to produce his game. You know, instead of going to one of these game manufacturers and they take all the money and maybe have a heart into it, and maybe don't, and who knows what happens to your little baby that you give birth to. So he decided to do it himself and go on the internet and do it. And he went on, you know, a crowdfunding site, raised $95,000. But he did research. He made sure that he studied all the other people uh, that did similar products. And see, all that data is open on the internet. You could see what they did, what the results were, what kind of you know uh, model maybe that worked. And so, I mean, it doesn't guarantee your success, but it increases your po po probability. And I, I think that, you know, that's why you want to do that. And the main thing about your success, no matter what it is, it is your heart <laughs> and, and your enthusiasm uh, and your desire to really want to win. Because most of the time you're going to start something, it's not going to work. So you have to learn and, and then do it again. So every time it fails, so somebody else's idea maybe didn't work for you, but you learn all the other stuff and then try another thing. So that's what's so great about the internet. You have a place to fail that it doesn't cost you anything. So if you go and develop your website for your game or for your new light bulb or whatever heck you're trying to invent or, or sell and it doesn't work, well gosh, you know, it costs you literally nothing to try it. You know, it's just your effort and time. And so if that doesn't work, then you go back, you know, and study other things. Hey, maybe there's something I really forgot or what was it? You know, what was good? What was bad? And try it again. We all have to fail like that. And that's what's so great about these, you know, websites out there to help you, you know, produce something for the world. You know, it doesn't cost you money. You know, you don't have to raise money. You know, you raise money from customers and they're the people who are going to buy the product. So they know for sure the ultimate customers are really like giving you money ahead of time for the product. You know, and that's wonderful because now you know it'll sell and you can get money from it. <laughs> and you don't have to go in partnership with some fat cat, you know, and please the fat cat first and then go try to flee, please the client, which may be two different kind of pleasers, <laughs> two different kind of requirements. Yeah. And here you go right to the horse's mouth that people want to buy that game. They give you money up front. Hey, OK, you go finish and, bail and send me one of the first ones. Yeah. And that's terrific. So now you know you have customers and you get money from the customers, not from some intermediary who thinks they know who, what the customers will do. They're guessing too, just like you are. And that's why you're going to the horse's mouth when you use you know, crowdfunding sites because you're getting it from potential customers. It eliminates all that middle guessing and trying to please somebody else in the meantime, or trying to please your relatives or friends, you know, uh, and they're never going to buy your game anyway. So why try to please them? It may be good for ideas, but... <laughs> The real thing you have to please is the customer. And that's what's so good about this. You get the money and the knowledge right from the customers. Well, Andra, Andre Novak, <laughs> and you're actually talking to us from Bucharest, Romania, and you have, I mean, I, I'm not a gamer, but I love this game. I mean, man, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a student of business and uh, economic growth and everything, and your game shows like the beginning of economic growth in using technology and how we all developed as societies, but you put it in a wonderful game that's so interesting uh, and it's just amazing and you went on crowdfunding I mean from Romania there you are selling board games in Romania go on a crowdfunding hoping to get like nineteen thousand dollars and you get ninety five thousand dollars and what would that be in Romania how many what, what is the currency in Romania 
Um, you would just multiply the US dollars by four and four. that's the amount we got. Right, so I was 400,000 what? What is the currency called? Romanian lei. Lei? Yes. Wow, so 400,000 lei. <laughs> well, that's real money, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and really, you were an engineer and, and trying to find a business. And, and it sounds like when we're talking about the background, I mean, you're really almost a, a technology historian because of this game, right? You really had to research this. Thanks. I, I will take the compliment, but I am not a historian. I am simply an engineer who did his homework, did about a year of research, trying to learn and understand all about the evolution of technology in human history, because I wanted from the very beginning to put this into a board game. Ah, so in other words, when you said like, who invented the printing press, you found out the real answer, right? <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> and also I, I had learned about that in maybe 20 years ago in school, but still, I mean, there are many technologies which we take for granted as being invested, uh, invented by the Western culture, whereas they were coming from the Far East, from China, most of them. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's been a quite uh, long and intense um, research work because we wanted to keep as much accuracy as possible in a, in a product which is not focused mainly on, on the the historical aspect, but it still wants to depict as well as possible the history of technology. Well, I mean, I see, I mean, the, the, the game looks gorgeous. I mean, your artists and everything, I mean, did a wonderful work. I mean, unless you did that too. I mean, you're the historian now because you learn, you can learn to do anything yourself now, right? On, on the internet. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Actually, the, the artist is, um, is American. Oh, wonderful. He has done a good job. He's, um, he's a long time, um, let's say, contractor, friend, uh -huh. partner of ours. He's been uh, drawing for us for two and a half years and we will keep working together. Oh, well, wonderful. But now, so you figured out the board stuff by, uh, and the, uh, the knowledge you needed to do a, a board game on technology, but the marketing, okay, so Kickstarter's there. So he said, hey, we're gonna try to get money from Kickstarter, but did you feel you understood marketing in the USA well enough? I mean, you live in Romania, you don't eat Cheerios every day, maybe like we grew up on. <laughs> and would you feel that you understand the culture well enough to sell the game? You obviously did because you made a hell of a lot more money than <laughs> you were looking for. But, you know, what inspired you to to learn or was it hard to learn it or, or you know because if nobody buys your thing doesn't matter how good it is you have to figure out how to get people to buy it absolutely well i i would be very arrogant saying that i know and i understand so well the u.s market no i i do not but i'm not alone um, uh -huh. we in in, in nscan we are a pretty international team i mean as, as i said before our artists are mostly americans but also mm -hmm. from western europe um, in our company, the, the people working here are some Romanian, some Polish, and we, we cooperate with people from many countries. And we are also quite familiar with American culture. I mean, 90% of the movies we watch on TV are I Hollywood see. movies. <laughs> we know of Oprah, we watch CNN. Um, we are quite well connected to what's going on in the US. Now, we have another advantage with, uh, with board games. This is a very specific market, and some concepts which apply to to other industries doesn't really don't really necessarily apply ah. to board games. Also, this is not a fast moving consumer good. We don't need that kind of specific marketing. We don't need TV ads. We were trying to talk to the audience, to our audience, to uh, there is a big website called Board Game Geek. It talks about people passionate about board games. Most of our advertising money went there. I see. <laughs> This is, this is a community of 3 million people, Woo! all passionate about board games. Also video games, also role-playing games, but this is mostly about board games. And we, we talked to them. We also found some relevant people in our industry, trend makers. We showed them our product and some of them said, wow, this is interesting. Yeah. And they talked about it and they made videos about it. And we used those videos to promote our campaign. And Kickstarter, I mean, Probably half or a bit more than half of Kickstarter business is made of board game fans, people mm. who are looking for board games and video games. 
So just through direct discovery through Kickstarter, we've got about 25% of our funds. So wow. I would say that we didn't necessarily do, um, we didn't put a huge amount of resources into marketing a product which we did not know if, would, if it would succeed or not. It was an experiment from our side in a way. And what we try to do is be really honest and really open and explain people why, what we are doing and why we're doing it. Yeah. Well, I mean, the videos, I mean, on Kickstarter, it's some videos of your reviews of people in the industry that reviews board games. And they were just gushing about how great, you know, the, the board game is, you know. And so I guess, so you, in other words, I guess, did the research necessary to find these people on the web to get, you know, and put the product in front of them and, and to see if they'll review it, correct? Well, yes. It's also that we are not new in the industry. I mean, ah. most, most Kickstarter creators, um, they they start in, in the board game business again. Yeah. They go first to Kickstarter. This is this applies especially to, to companies, startups from the US. Yeah. They go to Kickstarter, they might have a really, really good product, but sometimes they have a problem gaining the trust of people because nowadays mm -hmm. there are probably at the same time on Kickstarter, 100, maybe 200, maybe wow. more projects running specifically for board games. Now, we've been on, in, on this market since 2011. We, we learned a little bit. This, this is what I'm, I <laughs> want to do. Uh, we made some connections. We, we got some people um, to, to teach us how this industry works. And uh -huh. we, we, we learned. We, we, did, we put all our knowledge together to, to try to make this project as, as good as possible. Um, it did not come without effort or without resources. I mean, just to, the making of the board game itself took about a year and a lot of research, a lot of work, testing, involving different groups, different cultures, different countries. But the Kickstarter project itself, I mean, it, it took us a lot of research. We, we went and we read almost from, from A to Z, from, from top to bottom, about 400 projects. And then uh. we studied out of these, we selected 10 of them, which were, let's say, we use them as guidelines. Things I see. which people did well. Not not uh, super champions of Kickstarter projects which raised two, three million dollars, because we're not there yet. Right. But projects which raised uh, between 50 and 150 thousand uh dollars, -huh. projects which, which were run really well from our point of view. And we tried to see what they did well, what they did, what could I they see. So you, you became good students, <laughs> right? Yes, I would, say, I, would, I would certainly say so. So anybody could be a good student. See, in America, we think you have to buy success. You have to buy everything. So, uh, so you, maybe from another culture, realize that you just use yourself and your inner straight and learn and, and grow that way instead of trying to buy your way into everything. Huh? I would definitely say that um, having some some funds in the very beginning is not a bad idea. Right, right. There, there are things hurt. which money can buy, and sometimes having an, an, an expert doing something rather than, than you do it yourself mm -hmm. is better. But 90% of the success of, on Kickstarter comes from research, mm -hmm. from learning and from understanding what other people did right and where there is room for improvement. Right. Kickstarter, I mean, th their motto is fund your dream. This is what we've done, and this is what other thousands or hundreds of thousands of people have done before us. I believe it's it's open to anyone who who is stubborn enough to go <laughs> all the way <laughs> to spend, especially his time and well, brain power to. Yeah. Uh, well, to go well, to me, him. what what better way to do it? I mean, what, you're gonna have to do something in life. You might as well do something you got a passion for and have maybe some percentage of possibility of success and and like and then it happened yeah. to you and it happens to lots of people every day. Yeah? But it, it doesn't ha it it doesn't happen to anybody who doesn't do anything. Well, <laughs> to succeed, you have to try first. Right. right. <laughs> that, there's no magic. You just have to get your butt up and try and fall down and try it again. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> well, you're a delight. Thank you so much, Andre. And that's good philosophy. And, and coming from you, this famous historian about technology in the world. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'm still going to go with engineer rather than historian. I know. Okay. <laughs> well,
<laughs> well, I can understand, but uh, I just love to tease you. And, and to find out about your Kickstarter campaigns and get all, all your board games, and read the videos. I think the videos are so good that you guys did. Uh, you go to nskn.net. So nskn.net. And what does nskn stand for? Well, when we founded the, when we founded the company, we we're somehow in a crisis of ideas. So I we think. just put our initials together. <laughs> and it's just .net. That's it. Easy as that. When in doubt, take the obvious. <laughs> take care, Andre. Nice to meet you and best luck. Thank you so much for having right. me.